back and get him, Missawad. Last video in sedimentary rocks here. Oh, we're seven talk learning targets, but not that much. No, we're going to talk about sedimentary structures here. So some of the finer points of sedimentary rocks that really give us a lot of clues about how the rocks formed, what the environments were like, and help us understand and unravel that history of them. So let's take a look at some of this. So everything's pulled together. You got it. All right, so some of the basics, just so we're sure that we've got all the terminology here, okay. we want to talk about strata mm -hmm. and bedding planes. So okay. strata, like the picture on the left side, you're seeing immediately lots and lots of layers. In this case, layers are horizontal. They're very easy to see. When we say strata, that's what we're looking at, is those layers in the rock. Mm -hmm. How about bedding planes? Okay, bedding planes are still like layers or flat surfaces, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but they maybe do it says the changes in grain size. So... Maybe something in the environment changed, so you have a difference between two different planes. Maybe um, for a while, a smaller grain sediment was building up, and then more of an influx of you know water broke loose. Maybe a, a lot of larger grain stuff. So you have layers, but each layer is different in some way by maybe grain size or something like that. Or could be compositionally different. So you've got maybe some coarse sand grains, and then you've got a limestone. Mm -hmm. So those are going to be two breaks that you might see. Okay. So something in the environment changed. Yeah. Let's go on and talk about some more specifics here. So one of the specific types of structures we're going to see in sedimentary rocks is graded bedding. Mm -hmm. When we talk about graded bedding, this is like the lab we did where we took the big graduated cylinder and we shook it up a little bit. It mm -hmm. had a lot of mixed sizes in it. And what we find out is that in a graded bedding environment, if the sediment is allowed to settle, you're going to have those bigger grains settling down at the bottom, like mm -hmm. you can see in the picture here, and getting finer, so smaller grain size, progressively upward. Now in this case, the environment has gone through a couple of cycles where there's graded bedding set on top mm -hmm. of another graded bedding set, right? Mm -hmm. So what does this tell us about the deposition environment? So if you had water maybe coming out of the mountains, like we were saying, or something, where mm -hmm. all of a sudden it slows down fast, it's going to drop the biggest stuff, and then it's going to drop smaller stuff, and then finally, when the water calms down the most, it's going to be like the the real finds. Right. So could a flood or, you know, like a flash flood or an environment where all of a sudden the water comes down and then it kind of calms down again? Heavy melting in the spring that might cause that kind of mm -hmm. action in the mountainous regions. So seasonal yep. and, or a, an event um, during the an actual, um, like, year. Yep. That's good. So we got graded bedding as one of our structures that gives us some clues. Let's take a look at another one. Okay. Okay, so we've got a nice picture here that we can take a look at and see mm -hmm. if we can figure out current direction, right? So okay. we have a geologist out in the field, and we can see a set of crossbeds here. Right. We can see another set of crossbeds underneath it. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at this one first because I think the crossbedding is more well-defined. So we've got crossbeds that are angled this way. Point out in the picture up there which one these beds are. Again, those are like the leeward, I wish I was taller, leeward side. So the wind kind of comes up or the water current comes up. Uh -huh. And the, um, the leeward side, the steep side, yeah. is where it comes down. All so right. that's those coming down there. So in this one, mm -hmm. the current was flowing this way. This way. like So like from right to left in this picture. Mm -hmm. And falling steeply down the leeward side, making those right. layers. Yeah. And underneath... The angle of the crossbeds is a little different, mm -hmm. but it is going in a different direction. Right. So in this case, the current was flowing from the left, the left of the picture the to right. the right. So this surface here is a change in current direction. Okay. And that's what's important for geologists to be able to figure out is the change in current direction. Mm -hmm. If we want to look at that for some reason that we're quarrying this rock or we're mm -hmm. looking for other deposits associated with this particular sandstone, we might use the cross bedding to help us with that. Could that be with like those regressions and transgressions too? That would be helpful too. Yep. Okay. All right, so let's go on to the next slide and see what the next structure is. Oh, mud cracks. Mud cracks. I remember right. um, Mr. Baldwin talking about these before. Okay. So these really look like cracks in the mud that you might see if you're outside in the summertime and it's mm -hmm. been dry. You've got a puddle that maybe had some mud in it. Mm -hmm. And you'll actually see the edges of those mud cracks curling up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if you were to look down into them, you right. would find out that they get narrower. They're kind of V-shaped. Right. So you can always tell which way was up with a mud crack because it's narrower it's at the bottom. Skinnier at the bottom yeah. and then the edges curl towards the top. Right. So what does a mud crack tell us about the conditions in the environment where it was deposited? 
Well, it's probably a sediment that was really fine. Mm -hmm. So it might have been washed down there, uh, like maybe silver clay. Okay. And maybe it sat real calm like a lake or something, and then it got warm. And as the water evaporated away, making some of the other evaporate minerals, maybe at the very last stage, the silt and the clays started to kind of shrink. Maybe some of those clays were the shrinking clays, and they started pulling in. So mm -hmm. an evaporative, or evaporite deposit where the water is evaporating. Great. All right, let's go on to the next structure. Plant and animal fossils. These I are like helpful. These. Go ahead and t deal with this one. Um, well, I did my thesis on, uh, I did a lot of fossils like this, and we looked at a lot of um, uh, marine environments, and so, you know, there's plants, there's animals, things like that, that give you an idea, is it a terrestrial or is it a land kind of environment? And this one, it's hard to see on this picture, but that one, are we looking at a... Um, Looks like a fern of some sort, doesn't it? Looks yeah. like an impression of a leaf. Yeah. yeah, so that one almost looks like a glossopterus, kind of a land plant. Yeah. Yeah. So this would be a terrestrial environment. Mm -hmm. Now this guy right here looks like he's a gastrolip, like a, a nice snail-like guy. Yeah. Uh, he looks like he's in an environment, you probably could tell if it was a marine environment if you knew your gastrolis by, mm -hmm. by the species that it is. Right. So you could tell land versus lake or even marine environment by the type of animals that live there. So if you're working in the petroleum business, you might really be good at fossils and being able to determine which kinds of fossils are indicators of environments that would lead to coal or oil or gas formations and that would be very valuable to know that kind of information right because right? your gas and your oil are the marine you got it and then these are more like the coal the plants you got it that sounds Perfect. great all right what else do we have ooh, we're almost uh, almost at the end ripple this, marks ooh, this looks like more like the current coming yeah so like I've been you've been into the ocean a lot I have I know when I walk in the ocean it's not always flat and sometimes my feet kind of feel like the bottom's bumpy and it's you get kind of those same ridges going up on the, as the current goes one way and then they fall over so this is a typical deposit you see along a beach mm -hmm. and we actually when we're scuba diving we use these ripple marks a lot as natural navigation mm -hmm. the ripple marks are from the water sloshing in and the water sloshing out. So you see that wave action coming in, coming out, coming in, coming out, mm -hmm. and the sand grains just slosh back and forth in one of those little ripples. And sometimes they'll overtop and flow down, but most of the time they just slosh back and forth. So what ripple marks tell us, if you can find them in situ where they were formed, mm -hmm. they're always parallel to the shoreline. So you can find your way home. You cross Very those things, easy. you can get back. You got it. And if the water is just kind of moving back and forth, back and forth, it'd be real symmetrical. Yep. But if the waves were coming in, you'd have a big, long one and then kind of a drop. Yep. There we go. All right. Ooh, mastery So I check. think we're ready for the quiz. What do you think? I think so. I think they deserve a, an A today. All right. Good job. Last quiz for this chapter. Do a great job, guys. See you make, in class. Make it a good one.